Hello Runneneers, it's Manny again and second video this week we're gonna go over the digital event guide for springtime surprise came out. I'm gonna go over that in pretty pretty good detail. I'm gonna do that in a little bit but before we do we had registration for the 2025 Walt Disney World Marathon weekend happened just a few days ago so we're gonna go over what what happened then? So first off, I thought it was pretty seamless. I, I thought it was it went well. It wasn't, tor for me, it wasn't as fast as I uh, have gotten in in the past, but I was able to get what I wanted. Uh, so the first one to sell out was Goofy. Goofy sold out in approximately 53 minutes. Uh, I thought it was going to sell out pretty quickly. Number one, it's a 15th anniversary run. So it's an anniversary run. Um, so that's point number one. But number two is, you got to remember that it shares runs with Dopey, uh, the half marathon and the full marathon. So when it shares runs like that, that the 5K and the 10K do not, that means there's chances that it's going to sell out a little bit faster. And there's not as many bibs because the demand was going towards Dopey, which took about an hour and a half to sell out. I had heard from behind the scenes they added some more bibs. So I heard between 8,000, maybe even up to 10,000 uh, bibs just for Dopey. So that made sense to me that it lasted that long, even though the demand was higher. I think the demand for Dopey is going to go up for the next few years. It's going to stay about the same or go up the next few years before it may maybe stabilizes, starts coming down. But uh, Dopey obviously is very popular. So everything took about two hours to sell out, which was about right. Uh, so I kept seeing, I kept interacting with people. Most of the people that I interacted with got in. A few of you did not. So there is options for the people that did not get in. So the people that did not get in, there's two options. Number one, you can sign up on Telegram X. Uh, there are possibly another site that you can get on just to get notifications in case openings come up. And openings come up, there's usually one or two bibs, and then they're sold out again. So you gotta be quick whenever you do that. The second thing that you can do is going to be to join a charity. And if you guys message me, I have a contact with a few charities. So uh, if you message me directly, I can see if I can get you in contact with them. You all, you have to do fundraising. So just be aware of that. Uh, fundraising, I can give you some ideas of what you can do. Again, I'm not guaranteeing you're gonna do the fundraising and you're gonna get everything that you want just by share, you know, using my ideas, but it might get you a little bit closer. But there is uh, there is ways that you can get in even though it's sold out. So one thing to avoid is going to be people that are gonna be asking if they can transfer stuff. Do not fall for this, it could be a scam. It might just be some people that don't know any better, but if you look at the rules, and I stated this before, there is no transfers, there is no refunds. So there is, you know, a lot of people are gonna fall for this, so just be careful. So I went through a whole process thinking to myself, what happens if they do allow transfers? So first of all, if they ever do allow transfers, it would have to be run 100% by Run Disney or Disney, you know, whichever one you want to call it, but it would have to be run by them. So that way people would not fall into traps. Uh, so if they allowed transfers to happen, regular transfers to happen, if you think uh, things selling out uh, fast, getting into the queues are gonna, are gonna be hard, it's gonna be even worse because resellers would take over. Resellers would just go in there, they would clog up the whole system, they would probably buy out at least 10, 20% of the bibs, then whenever you would call, contact them to transfer it, it would be double, triple, quadruple the price. Might as well just go through a charity then, right? So I'm not, I'm gonna tell you this, people, it's not a good idea to allow transfers unless, again, it, it is controlled by Run Disney themselves. So now we're gonna move over to the Springtime Surprise Dig Digital Event Guide. So because it is a longer process for this one, uh, let's just get right into it. So guys, we're gonna try something a little bit new. I'm gonna actually do the picture in picture. This is gonna be video in video, actually. So you're gonna be able to see everything that I see as I'm talking about it, guys. And so you're gonna see me in the screen. I'm gonna switch it off right now. Okay, so guys, now you can see what I see. So basically, I'm on the Run Disney page. So I'm gonna to go to Events, and I am going to click on Springtime Surprise, all right? so. We're gonna to go to runner information. So this is where the official digital expo and event guide is, okay guys? 
So we're going to click on this. It's going to ask me if we want to go away. Yes, we are. All right, so the first page is going to be very, very simple. It's just kind of like a welcome. We have Adam Ball, the vice president, uh, uh, vice president of ESPN. Why will the sports run Disney and Disney water parks? No wonder they push the water park so much uh, during the run. So they want to make sure that we all go there. And we're going to have an after party, which we're going to get to in a little bit. But you can see up here the Neverland 5K. Uh, the adventures out there 10k the Kuna Matata 10 miler and the stitch Ohana challenge okay so we're gonna go into weekend events so we're gonna go ahead and start right here so the feature boost okay this is we're gonna just go important information we're gonna go one by one in the tab so and yes guys I need cheaters when I'm looking at something really small so event safety so it's gonna be the important information the event safety is gonna be here park rules so guys, it's going to be the basic park rules and so forth, the way which you can't do, you can't have any weapons, so forth and so on. So you're, we're going to go through security anyway. There is a video on costume guidelines. I'm not going to go over that, guys, it's, but something you can see right here, you can click on here. We're going to go over event, uh, event waivers. This is going to be something important because you're going to need this in order to get your bib, guys. So uh, you must, it, right away it says all weekend participants must compete uh, complete a waiver form before arriving to um, for each event you're participating in which that means if you're going to be doing the the 5k and the 10k individually you're going to need two different waivers if you're going to be doing the challenge you only need one and that's going to be it um, to sign your digital waiver that's going to be on your run disney account so you're just going to go into your account so on the top right hand corner from the first page that we saw it's going to be uh, you're going to see their um account information you're going to be helping and account information you're going to log into your account and it should be on there and it basically goes in here it says select view and sign your documents so in case you have not done that already guys you're going to do that so it's going to give you your check-in pass which we'll get to in a little bit because you should be getting that by monday roughly monday is the day that they usually give it to you okay so that's going to be it select your registration select your documents if you did not see your registration in your account, please uh, refer to what must I do and stuff. You can actually just do it at the expo too, guys. If for some reason or other it's not showing up, it never showed up, you don't get the expo pass. You can do it there. It's pretty easy. I record that at the expo anyway. So uh, once you have read and completed the waiver, you will agree to sign and uh, the waiver electronically. Type your full name and so forth and so on. So you're going to see it's pretty easy. It's gonna Now it says at the bottom, expo check and pass. And so right away, like I said, April 15th, it's going to be when you can get it. So you're going to get an email. You might not even have to get your email. Log into your account. It's going to be a blue button. It's going to say check and pass. You're going to click on it. You can print it out and bring it to uh, bring it there. Or you can just do what I do is you just take a digital shot of it and then you show it to them. But the important thing is to m m remember to bring your ID for any adult who is doing the run. They must bring their ID. OK. So let's go back over here costume guidelines we're going to go over this very very quickly because it's the same thing especially if you've been running it you know that you cannot do certain things so uh they must be family friendly <laughs> so uh that i think speaks for itself nothing uh, obstructive offensive uh objectionable or violent participants 14 and under uh may not wear costumes mask to uh may not wear any costume mask or of any kind Okay, participants 13 and younger may wear costume masks. However, the participant's eyes must be visible and the mask may not cover the participant's entire face, okay? Uh, participants who dress like characters may not pose for pictures or sign autographs for other guests except express as expect, except as expressively requested and authorized by Run Disney. Ah, uh, you know, uh, that kind of gets a little bit broken, but that's not the, uh, to me, it's not a big deal. Costumes may not contain any weapons. Uh, that's a big one, uh, which resemble could easily be mistaken for an actual weapon. Layered costumes, such as a ball gowns, uh, hoop skirts, those that may have in infrastructure with metal components or hard edges, costumes that do not follow the natural contour of the human body and or costumes that could conceal prohibited uh, items are not permitted, guys. So again, somebody was talking about doing something with like the Cinderella ball, which I think would be a great costume. You can't do that. Um, so just on down the lines, a lot of it is just very easy. Larger props, 
including uh, without limitation items present safety hazard uh, the trident something like that something and again it's just gonna be like this something that's metal something that you can hit somebody with uh, those that are inflatable or those that are physically connected to multiple participants in each um, each other are not permitted either so so that's that I'm just going over these small inflatables soft bodies are okay um, Wings hats are permitted, however, they must not cover the participant's face. Um, case must be uh, may be worn in the length uh, of may not it cannot go below your waist if you wear a, a, a cape. Themed T-shirts, blouses, sweatshirts, and hats are acceptable. Participants who do not adhere to the guidelines may be refused entry and or removed. Um, so just make sure that you you. You know you follow the guidelines so you don't get banned guys and if you know they tell you it's questionable and stuff like that just ask 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 and uh, if you just if you get told no um, just don't do it guys it's not worth it to not be able to run anymore okay uh, we this one's gonna be a really really important one so I'm gonna bake bring this a little bit bigger because we're gonna go over it each one of the races so these are the opening and closing times for the 5k the opening time, there's only one opening time at 3.45, so the runs are going to start at 5. That's when we can start going over to the corral. The, the, and this is all uh, five groups. And, there, and if and I see this correctly, there's only going to be five groups for each of the runs. So the 5K, the 10K, and the 10 miler. It does have the times that you can go in, the closing times. Um, so the only different one is going to be the, or the start group time is going to be the 10 miler, which opens up at 3.30. The other two start up at 3.45. But you look at the excuse me the times that the corral closes that's the important one right there because at 440 if you're in corral a and you get there at 445 they're going to put you in corral b uh, guys if you get there late and it's you know again it's not the cast member's fault they're going to let you they're going to tell you you can't go in there just get in corral b just try to get to the front of b as much as you can but uh guys do not argue do not get angry do not get upset again it's not worth it because you're you know you're going to get banned you're going to get you know if you get too mad too upset and stuff um the last one it says uh start line clear so that's when the last group is so again once and it's going to be the balloon ladies uh for the 10k and the 10 miler the 5k is just uh, us individual runners so once the last group starts that's that's it okay so uh, they're going to close that so but basically especially for the 5k it's going to be up to their uh you know disposal so if you get there a little late so it's uh it's, let's say it's almost six o'clock and it's that's the last one that's starting and you get there at 605 if you get there and they don't let you start that's really up to them guys that's really on you for getting there that late you know sometimes the things happen you oversleep you find a way there you know they're going to close the parking and so we're going to get into that in a little bit but this is really really important guys so guys look at this make sure that you know this so you can get there to your corral on time all right so we got to that we are going to go into, oh, nope, no, not that. We're going to go into reminders. And let's make this a little smaller right here. These are just going to be basically just pr uh, prior to participating in any exercise program or activity, you should seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health professionals. This is uh, your responsibility to make sure you're in pretty good shape, okay? So um, make sure you're there. All athletes, guests, uh, Costumes and bags are subject to screening prior to entering the expo and this event staging areas. So again, and there's going to be something in a little bit. We're going to go over what happens when you go into the staging area. So um, guys, there is something that you're going to have to know about that. Of everyone's safety, selfie sticks, baby joggers, strollers, baby carriers, baby backpacks, uh, skate scooters, bicycles, skateboards, and pets of any kind are prohibited on the course. Violations, uh, violators will be removed from the course and transported to the finish line area. Now, the only exception is I have seen uh, people that have the, 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 the dogs that do run, uh, run with them, their support dogs. And so you're gonna have to get the clear, you have to get that cleared by dis, uh, athletes with disabilities. So make sure you get that cleared. But I have seen them, I think it's a great thing. I love watching the dogs. Some of the dogs, you know, actually the dogs, uh, um, 
behave sometimes better than the humans do so that's interesting so all participants must attend the expo you have to go to the expo the day before uh their first race or the, the race with with a valid id and their waiver in the check-in pass uh to pick up their race bib okay for drivers all athletes and spectators must park at epcot again everything's going to be at epcot we're going to see that in a little bit so nothing is going to be starting anywhere else no matter what anybody says um, for resort guests, participants are and spectators who are staying at host resorts are encouraged to utilize the provided Run Disney event transportation. We're going to go over that a little bit, but guys, put it in your mind because somebody's going to be out there going like, well, the All-Stars don't have anything. Yes, they do. It, it, it's it, People are going to say that. I don't know why they say that, but you're going to see that uh, as soon as you get to your resort. Even sometimes the staff doesn't know, so they're going to say, uh, we don't know. Just look for the easels and they're going to be uh, telling you where to go and so forth and so on. Okay, uh, race bib and group assignments. This is going to be real easy. Please wear your race bib centered in the front of your outermost garment. So make sure that it's showing, okay? Don't cover it because they do have the option if you this covered. They don't see it. We're going to see it again in a little bit with some other rules and stuff. If you cover it off, they can pull you. Okay, you're going to be able to show it to them and they're going to let you go more than likely. But guys, don't give them that option. So make sure that you can see it. Just put it on your top layer in case you are layered. So, um, it is a responsibility of the athlete to wear his, uh, his or her bib during the race as well as uh, know the following. Or receive the account time, please confirm your bib is clear. So you're going to be able to see it. Um, unaltered or unmodified. Uh, do not fold it. Do not wrinkle it. Because uh, it's going to wrinkle. And actually, I think a lot of people like, I like to keep my bib. So that's pretty cool. Pinned on all four corners so because it doesn't flap open. Okay. Uh, not covered with the shirt, jackets, winter wear, ath uh, ath athlete belts, water bottles, etc. A participant is seen without their bib number while running. They will be removed from the course for security and safety reasons. The letter on your bib will determine the assignment start group. So we saw the start group C uh, earlier, A, B, C, D, and E. So whatever it's going to be on the top, uh, uh, I think it's the top left corner you're going to be able to see it and you're going to be able to say all right i'm in a b c or d don't be surprised if one of them say they say a slash b which means you're going to be in two different corrals so that's going to be okay so uh you just know the first one's going to be a the second one's going to be b but i think they're going to give us if you're doing the challenge you're going to give you three bibs and so that's it so it's supposed to be because of the proof of time or the estimated finishing time that's up for debate but Again, right now, it's not up for, we're not going to debate that right now. Start groups are based on anticipated uh, pace per mile for the 5K or the 10K. No start group, uh, groups will be made change. So in other words, you can't change anything at the expo. You can't go over there and say, well, I'm going to run faster. Look, I have proof of time. Guys, I have seen it change before. It's up to you to go and ask for them, but it's up to them to say no. Uh, when I saw it change, it was at Disneyland because they were eh, they were a little bit iffy of what they were doing, guys. But again, at Disney World, I've never seen them really change anything, or at least not uh, in, the, in the most recent past. And so, uh, remember to fill out the emergency medical contact uh, information in the back of the bib. Okay. Uh, so yes, they're going to be. So we're going to be starting. And, and this is basically what the next day is going to say A, B, C, D, and so forth and so on. And But there is actually waves. So A will have a few waves. And now if you look at the jumbo screen that they have up there, you're going to see A, uh, wave one, A, wave two. And they're going to be anywhere between three to, I think C sometimes has about 10, 12 waves. And so there's a lot of people in there. So uh, participants, this is another important one. Participants must enter through the staging area within Epcot parking lot. In order to access the start group and start or brace failure to do so will result in disqualification this happens because that's where we go through security guys so guys if you do not go through security they are not going to allow you to come in there's some people that want to walk over from uh, another hotel because they can see it from over there i've stayed at those hotels of port orleans and so forth if you try to walk over and they catch you you can be banned it's not worth it just take the shuttle it's not it, it's not worth it so um uh, participants must comply with uh, the 16 minute per mile pacing requirements uh, established by Run Disney. So guys, then, and it basically goes on to say that includes that, you know, you can't just run 16 minute mile and then add the character stops and so forth and so on. With that said, guys, it's 16 minute mile only for the 10K and the 10 miler this weekend. 
or uh, next weekend, I should say. All right, so guys, it's 16 minute mile from when the last group starts, which is the balloon ladies. The 5K is on time, so you can just go. Um, I still wouldn't just stop and not run uh, because again, they, they can close the course. But guys, a 16 minute pace when the last group starts. So hypothetically speaking, if you start at A, you might even be able to do a 20 minute per mile pace and get away with it. It's when the last people start, which is the balloon ladies, guys. So just make sure that you understand that, okay? Flag guidelines, there's not, I don't see a lot of flags as much as I used to see, but uh, the, the flag uh, guidelines are here. I'm gonna go over them real quickly. It's, uh, these items aren't allowed at the start and finish staying ages. The race course, if you do have a flag, any larger than three by five feet, uh, regardless of how the flag is intended to uh, be carried, so uh, so you can't have that. Poles uh, may not be longer than four feet and diameter more of four inches. So in other words, something that you can't you know swing it around. Uh, so that's 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 just for safety reasons, guys. And I understand a lot of people want to show their patriotism, and that's fine. That's okay. But again, I understand that you might turn accidentally and hit somebody, and that's the reason that they do that. And again, the whole idea, this is a fun run, so let's not get hurt. Um, it can be made uh, of wood, can be made of wood, plastic, and or PVC. Metal is not allowed. Uh, only poles with rounded or flat ends are allowed. No uh, decorative or sharp ends will be allowed. Uh, flag harness will be permitted if the participant bib isn't covered and the harness uh de, and the harness does not pose a safety hazard very easy okay uh the advent medical health this is very very easy there is going to be medical tents all around there's going to be some during the races we're going to be able to see right now in the course that there's going to be some there and they're there for your safety if you're not feeling good to stop talk to them they'll take care of you right there but it's very very easy they always had them there and they've been pretty very good, uh, very good at uh, giving you whatever you need. Weather, this is an important one. So you're gonna see the green flag, yellow flag, red flag, black flag. And so just just, just think to yourself, if it's a green flag, that means we got, we're okay, we're gonna be fine. Yellow flag, it's not ideal, but we're still gonna be able to run. Red flag, there could be potentially some dangerous uh, uh, weather, and I'm probably either, if it's, if it's gonna be anything, it's gonna be, extra, it's gonna be heat. Uh, it's gonna be humidity, so forth and so on. So, uh, so they try to get you to, to heat up. Once you get to the black extreme, they can cut the course, which we all know. Uh, the ones who did the uh, the Walt Disney World Marathon this past January, we were actually cut. Uh, you know, it was cut short because uh, we did the inaugural 7.1 half marathon uh, because of, uh, uh, and some even less than that because of the weather. So. Just remember that. And remember this, when people get mad and everything like that, it's just, they're doing this for your safety because again, there's a liability on the other side. So they're doing that just to make sure better safe than sorry, guys. So guys, don't be upset, don't get mad, don't throw tantrums, so forth and so on. Race etiquette. And I am gonna go, not on this video, but on the next one that I'm gonna do before this, I'm gonna go a little bit more because I didn't see a lot of stuff in race etiquette here that really, really, uh, I mean, the, what really should be followed, but some of the stuff here is just very basic. Uh, so again, the race etiquette, please pay attention to the pre-race instructions. That's gonna be, that, that, that one is important because they're gonna be talking to you just in case the weather is a little bit off, so forth and so on. So just to make sure, um, make sure that you ra race bib in the front. And so, and it's also, and this, I don't know about the etiquette because it's the photographers, uh, if you're gonna be taking pictures and you wanna come out, you know, the, that, that bib needs to come out. If not, they're not gonna be able to, to tell who you are. And so you can get upset, but if you covered up your bib, you're not, or at least partially covered, you're not gonna be able to see anything there. So uh, please enter your, cor uh, your correct start group to ensure that you are running with the people who have similar pace. Uh, again, that's up for debate. Runner walk no more than two abreast. So, uh, guys, if you're going to be running with a big family, then you run single file. And I've actually seen the dopey runners. I can't remember what else they've called themselves. But, guys, they are perfect when they do this. You see them and they're running a straight line. And they just take turns going to the front or going to the back, whatever it is. And they do a great, great job. That's a perfect example of the way it should be done. 
So if you want to run with a friend, they're in a different star group, the person that is in, let's say, A and another person starting in C, you can go back. You cannot go forward. So the person in A can start in C. The person in C cannot start in A. Okay. If you're stopping for water, move, uh, move way over to this table, grab your water, and then move away. That is true, so you don't, uh, and, and that's the basic point is don't impede somebody else's progress. If you're directly impeding somebody else's progress, that's not a good thing, guys. You wouldn't want it done to you. Just think about it that way, so. Uh, move to the side if you see somebody saying, excuse me, you're coming through on your left, something like that. Um, so uh, I started doing that a little bit more because it was clogging up. And guys, uh, from my perspective, and you can see the videos, you see a lot, a lot of people walking all the way across. They're not necessarily together, but they clog up every everybody, uh, all the areas. So instead of doing this, I go to the left and I just say, hey, the left. And so everybody needs to move over. And don't be upset if they do that, guys. Just move out of the way. Be courteous because, again, we need to share the course with everybody. When you're approaching the finish line, you may see loved ones. Oh, yeah, I, I skipped. Uh, feel free to, uh, uh, to shout words of encouragement and other athletes you would hear uh, and, and things that you would like to hear yourself. This is a nice way of saying don't cuss out somebody. Don't tell them off, especially not in a Disney run. Uh, so you're approaching the finish line and you see loved ones, okay? They cannot join you guys, so don't encourage them to join you. And another thing I'm gonna add is that if you, you're gonna be running across, I understand a lot of people because they've overcome some stuff. If you're towards the back and there's not many people there, or you're in an area where you, there's not that many people there, then interlock, finish, and then spread out. But allow other people, again, do not impede their direct progress. Let them finish also, because it, remember, it's everybody's race, anybody who paid for this, and so. Uh, enjoy the post-race uh, refreshments, but remember others will want to enjoy the goodies too. So in other words, don't just take everything. So don't be sitting there going like, well, I'll take, because it happens. They, they run out of uh, a Powerade or water or whatever. And don't be saying, I need three because, uh, you know, no, just take the one and that's it. So um, celebrate and have a good race. Now I will add to this race etiquette. And I always think to myself, the Run Disney should hire me to do a whole video, produce a whole video on uh, race etiquette. I have so many ideas for that. So this one's we're going to go over really, really quickly. The minivan, that's going to be a simple way of saying that's something that they partner with Lyft. So in case you need uh, you need to get somewhere a little bit quicker, you can call the minivan there. Photo pass. This one's going to be important. And I am going to make this big because these are the numbers you're going to use. So whenever you finish running and you bought the photo pass, uh, you have an annual pass, whatever it is, and you're going to go to the photo section at the uh, My Disney Experience or the Disneyland or Disney World page. I'm sorry, and this is the, what you're going to put in for the 5K. You're going to put 2024 STSU R5K, and then your five bib numbers. Let's say Manny. This is what happened. My bib only has four numbers. Okay, so you put a zero at the beginning. So if it's uh, uh, one two three four, then it's going to be zero one two three four. And each bib, uh, so you're gonna have to put this in for a 5K, you're gonna put it in for the 10K and the 10 miler. If you put it in for the 5K and you're doing the challenge, it's not gonna automatically live, uh, put your 10K and your 10 miler. You're gonna have to do that for each one of them. If you have family members or you sold spots um, because of uh, uh, you know, you're raising money for charity and so forth and so on, again, you're gonna have to put in each one of the people's name. Post race information. We're gonna go off this site for just a little bit. The race results are not gonna be here. This is only for the 10K and the 10 miler. Getting closer to the race, you're gonna be able to find this. You're gonna be able to put your information in. No telling, uh, lately it's just been, you're just gonna be able to get your information. So for example, uh, loved ones at home can actually sit there and, and track your progress anytime you, like for the five, uh, the 10K, I'm sorry, when you finish the 5K, it's gonna be able to, to give an update then and then the, the um, tent at the finish there. But we're gonna close this out and we're gonna go back. Okay, so now we finish with this one. There's gonna be a lot of repeats, so we're gonna go back. And so whenever there's repeats, I'm just gonna go, go by it. But man, health and you see how long it takes to do this. Health and Fitness Expo. Now here are the days and there is, um, all the information on where it's open so these are the days this is the opening so first day is 10 to 7 second day is that's going to be friday is 12 to uh, 6 the saturday is the last day 11 to 3. all right virtual queue you will only need the virtual queue if you are buying merchandise so do not worry about this and this is usually for only for day one and sometimes it's not for the whole day uh it's been 
common the last couple of runs where once you get and, and last year's springtime surprise once it got to like one or two it was already off you can just go in there so so you're gonna have to get this and the important things to know is how to join it and this is going to be the step-by-step -step. you're going to open up the mind disney experience you're going to na navigate to virtual queues you're going to see when it's going to basically say wide uh, uh wide world of sports so you're going to get on that yeah it's going to say join the uh the virtual queue and uh, the merchandise shop okay and you're going to be able to request that at 8 30 on that uh that wednesday i'm sorry that thursday and so it's going to be the first day april 18th that you can do it and uh you're gonna have to get the number of people. You can get up to six people. So if you have more than one person in the in the party, uh, uh, in the group, so each one can get their own, uh, but you can go into the person before as long as there's within six people there. So you're gonna do the join the queue. It's just like any other queue. It's the, uh, right now, the Cosmic Rewind and the Tron. So you're gonna pl uh, press that at, starting at 8.30, join queue, it's gonna give you a number. And it just, like it says right here, it's gonna give you a call back. Uh, number and it's gonna it, it can give you estimated time you're gonna get the push uh notification uh so you're gonna go up there it's gonna give you a qr code you're gonna open that up for every individual so there's three people they're gonna give you three qr codes you're gonna scan all three of them and you're in and it's probably it says 10 a.m it's probably gonna call you back before if you're one of the earlier groups but you're still gonna go into a holding area uh then so just be prepared for that so a lot of people will sit there it's 9 45 i got called back and it's like yeah but you're still going to go into a holding area there is a small chance you're going to still get in there pretty quick but uh there is a chance anyways so that's it um on arrival follow the signs and check in and prepare to show your card uh your cast member your digital entry code or magic band all right event waivers this is going to be another important one because again we talked about it uh you're going to need an event waiver just to get your bib and the bib pickup uh starts the first day of the expo it's towards the back we're going to go over that in a little bit but each person must have completed uh the digital waiver or the physical waiver there and so once you're there and you got to have your id if you are under 18 you're going to have to have a legal uh a parent or legal guardian to sign the waiver for you Okay, so it's real easy. We've already gone over there. You're gonna go in there, sign your account, and starting on the 15th, you're gonna have access to that check-in pass. Race bib and shirt pickup. So this is gonna be towards the back on the left-hand side. We're gonna go over the maps in a little bit, but it's gonna be very, very easy. You're gonna go and you're gonna pick up the bib. Again, guys, remember this. If you're doing the challenge, it's one bib. If you signed up for all three races individually, one, two, or three races, then you're gonna need, you're gonna pick up, they're gonna need three passes. Let's say you run, you signed up for each one individually, so you're not doing the challenge directly. Excuse me. Uh, you are gonna have to pick up three bibs and you're gonna have three check-in passes. So guys, just remember that, okay? And then the shirt pick, uh, pickup is gonna be where the actual expo is. We're gonna go over that in a little bit when we see the, the maps, guys. It's gonna be very, very simple. You're gonna to go to the back. You're gonna pick up uh, it, it, part of the bib. You're gonna you're gonna tear off the top part. You're gonna hand it to them. They're gonna give you your shirt. Uh, make sure that the shirt size is there. I would open them up and look just to make sure that you got the correct size. Um, there's nothing wrong with the shirt. Hey guys, if you put it on and it's too tight or it's too big, there's a place back there where you can exchange shirts. So just remember that. And the mo one of the more important things that they're gonna do, they're gonna give you a clear gear bag. It's very clear. So if you're gonna take anything to the run, that's the only bag that you can take. So make sure that you have that. So you're gonna take something for a change of clothes after the run, you're gonna put your clothes in there. You're gonna have to use that, that gear bag, okay? So just remember that, okay? Transportation, uh, Expo transportation is very simple. 30 minutes before the Expo starts and then 30 minutes after the Expo starts, that's when it's gonna go. It's gonna be to all resort, Disney resort uh, hotels. So anything that's on Disney Resort, including uh, Shades of Green and including the, the Swan and the Dolphin, they're all gonna be included. Uh, so guys, just remember that. So that way you know that you got transportation. So um, unless you have to take a lift or an Uber, that's there. We're not gonna go over the mini van connected by lift. We are gonna go over the maps. So you're gonna see A, B, and C. So A is gonna be at the front. So the drop-off point is over uh right to, to the bottom of this picture and the a is where the merchandise is going to be 
The B is going to be where you pick up your shirts and the general expo is going to be. You might see some food vendors on the way up and possibly even vendors, but on the most part, it's just gonna be food vendor. And C is gonna be where you pick up your bibs and they've added a few things. So let's take a look over here. So A, uh, a is going to be where you pick up your, your mer merchandise, pre-purchase merchandise, distant uh, number photo ops. So guys, so remember this for the 5K, the 10K, the 10 miler and the challenge, they're gonna have the photo ops for the numbers right there. Uh, Club Run Disney Platinum is on the, uh, on the um, Head, the headquarters is going to be on the second level. Uh, strollers are not permitted in the arena. Just remember that. Uh, where you go pick up your shirts, there's also going to be event information for and transportation. A run Disney showcase, sponsors and exhibitor booths, food and beverage. And actually, they, I, and there they even have a restaurant. That's actually not that bad. So I like to eat there. The ESPN Wild World of Sports says. Uh, so again, strollers are not allowed there. The State Farm Fieldhouse, the main floor, uh, that's going to be where the, ra the race bib pickup is. Runner relations, athletes with disabilities booths. So if you're, run uh, if you're an athlete with disabilities, you're going to go there so you can get your information. So for character greetings and photo pass and waiver signings. Now the important one here is character greetings and photo pass because they moved all the characters over there. So now you can see the characters in there and they are cool. And some of them actually have a, a screens where they can do a uh, magic shot. So uh, I would really, really recommend. The first day is gonna be packed. If you can go back the second day or even the third day, there are not as many people. So you can take some really, really cool pictures. Alrighty, so let's go on with the map of the Advent Healthcare. So this is the merchandise in the middle. So uh, the box office. So this is outside. We're going to enter and the uh, entrance from the complex. So you're going to see the bottom left hand corner. And that's on the top is when they're going to have the uh, the platinum member lounge, so forth. And so you're going to see the official merchandise in there. There you see to the right, you see the numbers. So 3.1, 6.2, 10 and 19.3. So you can take pictures with there. Uh, pre-purchased over there to the left uh, pre-purchased uh, co uh, commemorative items the checkout is to the left and then you're going to see the mobile checkout so you can do mobile checkout too and then you exit okay so very very simple you'll see it all when you get there but just remember that this is uh, you can take some pictures there the athletic center okay this is where we're going to pick up our shirts so to the left is it's going to be uh, we're actually going to go downstairs so this is kind of a funky pictures of the stairs. We're gonna go downstairs. The exhibitors are right in the middle. Uh, we'll go over the exhibitors, but the great Jeff Galloway is usually there, guys. Go and say hi. Um, to the bottom, it's gonna say, it, uh, the bottom towards the left, info and transportation. So you have any uh, kind of uh, questions about any of that, uh, just uh, just go and ask there. Uh, to the top, uh, on the right-hand side of the top. So if you go into it, to the left side, you're gonna see the 5K and 10K shirts. Uh, on the other side, it's going to be the 10 miler and the challenge shirts and shirt exchange. Just like I said, there's going to be a shirt exchange there. So in case you didn't get the right size, make sure that you get that before you leave. Cause afterward, it's going to be a lot harder to do this. And now we got to the field house this is where you're going to pick up your bibs. Again, it's lower level. So you're going to come in, you're going to go to the staging area, especially if it's the first day, you're going to go up the stairs and you're going to, uh, I'm sorry, you're going to go down the stairs and back up. I, uh, something like that. All right, so you're gonna be on the lower level, but you're gonna see that uh, if you're looking at the main entry right there, the 5K and the 10 miler are to the left. Uh, the 10K is in the middle, the challenge is up. Uh, if you walk in, it's gonna be across the way. It's also gonna have runner relations, uh, runner relations on the other side, athletes with disability and run Disney account services. That's if something is wrong. I had it once where there was something wrong with my, uh, my account, so I went there and they took care of it. And look over here, the characters and photo pass. This is before the exit. So guys, I would really highly recommend going over there because they usually have some really, really cool characters and they they change them out throughout the day. So you might go uh, in the morning and in the afternoon, they're gonna be uh, separate characters. And again, there's a photo, uh, photo pass. So there's gonna be some magic shots. Alrighty, we're going back. So yoga, we're gonna go over this pretty quickly, okay. So the schedule is the 18th, the same day as the uh, as uh, the expo. It's at 5 a.m. It's going to be at Hollywood Studios, and uh, people who want transportation, there's going to be something right here for you. Uh, one hour yoga experience. Uh, 
They're going to give you the yoga mat and carrying strap, provide each participant at the event, bottle water, complimentary guest parking as provided uh, at Hollywood Studios between 4 and 4.45. Um, you must bring your photo ID and your check-in pass. Um, make sure you sign your digital waiver. It begins, uh, check-in begins at 4.15. It ends at 4.45. You're not supposed to be allowed if you get there late. Okay, so that is it you will be exited afterward you cannot stay there is no rides going on at this time so let's take a look at this one there's a yoga transportation so you're going to see all the routes and they're going to go around so make sure that you know your time uh, so you can be out there in front of your resort so then to pick you up all right here on the right hand side guys so just remember this make sure that you got this uh, in case you're doing this to make sure that you know when they're gonna pick you up and that's it for yoga I've never done yoga myself so the Neverland 5k this is gonna be a really really cool one and I have ideas for picture ops afterwards so this is gonna be at from 5 to 7 30 a.m. roughly 7 30 on Friday the 19th to start and finishes at Epcot now guys remember we said or I said at the beginning we're gonna go over this uh, opening and closing especially the closing times of this group over and over and over so people who get there and say, hey, I did not see this, it's going to be everywhere on all these pages. And there, there's a good chance they're going to email us there. So people, remember to look at your start group closing time. So this is a time that the, the so for example, Corral A at 440, you can, no longer, uh, you can no longer get into that corral. So it's 445, you're going to have to get into B if you, if you have A on your shirt and so forth and so on. So that's going to be something there. Race etiquette, we already know. Reminders, we're going to go over this pretty quickly. Uh, all participants must pick up their race bibs before. Okay. Drivers, all athletes will must park in Epcot. For resort guest uh, participants are, uh, and spectators who are staying at the host hotels are encouraged to use the Run Disney transportation. Participants must arrive at Epcot parking lot on Friday by 4 o'clock. After security check-in, um, participants will have to enter through the staging area within Epcot parking lot access to the start groups to start the race. Not doing so will start in uh, disqualification. That's why I told you, if you decide to walk from the other side, you're taking a chance. You get caught, you can be disqualified and or banned. So, um, a participant is assigned a race bib. Please wear the race bib center in the front of your out more outermost garment. Is a responsibility of the athlete to wear the bib during the race as well as knowing the following. Okay, make sure it's clear, visible, uh, unaltered, unmodified, do not fold. We've already basically gone over this. And so, uh, again, so yes, just remember again, if you're seen without your bib, they can pull you from the course. So please don't do that. Spectator viewing. This one's going to be one that I'm going to go over for each one of the runs because it's a little bit different. But... Uh, uh, spectator viewing for this one is going to be accessible from 5 to 6 a.m. via the Epcot. That's going to be for the start part of it, for the finish part of it, depending on how fast your runners are, all the way up to 8. And you're going to see the, the difference. Once you get there, you're going to be able to go walk. And it's, it's a distinct area that you walk. I've done it before because I've gone to see them. You go over there. You can see your runner take off. Then you just walk back, and you can actually see your, your uh, runner finish. But again, make sure that you know their pacing and so forth and so on so you make sure you don't miss it um okay so uh this is a really important one so for your safety spectator viewing on our open roadways and overpasses is not allowed okay there is places that you can see so that that, that is not allowed just again for safety so make sure that you don't do that there's uh, i know there was a case where somebody ran up from a hotel they they were where they weren't supposed to be I do think they went a little too far with the way that they handled that situation, but don't put yourself in that situation. Don't hand out any food or beverages. That's not a good thing. I mean, if, if you know somebody that's your loved one, that's fine, I, I would think so. But uh, don't do that. It's not the best thing that you can do. And if you're a runner, don't take food from somebody you don't know. Um, if Disney hands you something and it's t it's tainted, something's bad, at least you can go after them. But if you, if you get something from a, a stranger, that's on you. And so you can't, that, that's going to be something that, that you, you know, that, that's going to be something that, that's on, it's going to be completely on you is what I should say. All right, so if you want to volunteer, it gives you the 
volunteering uh, email right here and I still think that they probably will might need some volunteers never hurts if you did it I've done it once and I loved it uh, pro tips if you're making a sign uh, bright paper so they can see it uh, make sure you know your athletes pace we already went through that um, plan on your viewing locations ahead of time I know what your athlete is wearing have fun and cheer for everybody I did and so that's it so alrighty uh, transportation guest transportation so it, it, we need to be athlete and spectator should arrive by four so it's gonna be something that's gonna be asked uh, so by four o'clock guest transportations to and from Walt Disney World Resort Shades of Green and Swan and Dolphins uh, they start at three and they go all the way to the start line till five and it's finish line they start at 630 and they go to 8:30. So remember that too, because if you stay there, then you might have to walk all the way to the front of Epcot in order to get the shuttle back to your place. So, um, and, and use it, the the Run Disney transportation, the free transportation. If you're staying on property, you don't have your vehicle. So the things that you got to understand is personal transportation. This is it. Uh, there will be okay. There's another one. There will be no monorail or Disney Skyliner transportation during the 5K, the 10K, and the 10 miler. Personal transportation, uh, guests not staying at the resort, so you can go and you will park. Uh, parking is free before 6 a.m. And they possibly do, I think I saw somewhere, they close it at about 4. So try to get there before 4 o'clock. Uh, will they, is it a hard 4 o'clock? Not 100% sure. I wouldn't push it, but I think if you're there a little bit later, they might let you in. I'm not going to go over the minivan and connected lift. It's the same thing. Photo pass, it's always good to go over this over and over and over. So here it goes. So as you, can, you guys can see and make sure that you got these numbers. They also should be in the back of your bin. All right, so 5K map. I went over this a little while ago. So we're going to start at Epcot. We're going to, this is a parking, the start is going to be like where the parking structure is. We're going to run back. The first mile is going to be outside. Don't worry, guys. They sometimes have some entertainment. They have, uh, they usually have DJs, some music going on uh, before we actually go into, let's go here, okay, right here. Um, before we go into Epcot for a little after about a mile, a mile and a half in, um, we're gonna go into it. Uh, the the uh, the blue uh, W's are water stops, so you're gonna see a water stop, but we're gonna run around World Showcase. Uh, the cool part is when we are gonna be running, we actually run through uh, galaxies, I'm sorry, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, the Cosmic Rewind. So we're gonna run through there. We exit through the side where usually where Test Track and Test Track is gonna be changing, guys. So uh, if you can get on it, get on it, okay. And you're gonna end exit um, on marker three and then you finish in the front of Epcot, guys. So no, we do not finish inside of Epcot. So if you have any questions about, hey, I wanna stay in the park, uh, you're gonna have to have a park pass. You're gonna have to get back in. So, and we're only going to go over this once because look at where the starts are. They're going to be more or less at the same place. So, so if you can see, this is uh, basically where all the starting information, the start groups are, reunion area, spectator. You're going to see spectator viewing uh, the, on the top. It's going to be the one where, where we're starting. So you can see the runners over there, spectator viewing. They, they do have stands. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, so that is this one and the Epcot staging area. So this is where the start group is on the top left hand corner, spectating viewing uh, on the side and you're going to walk through this or there's a possibility you're going to walk through this and there's a bunch of uh, stuff like information, uh, tent, baby care in case you need that, uh, gear bag, uh, that's where you check in your bags, uh, athletes with disability finish, uh, game day photos. So there are going to be some characters there so you can actually go there, you usually have four of them. And if you watch my videos, I usually go and try to see which four uh, characters. Lately, they've been switching them. So they have one for a certain amount of time, then they, they switch them off to a different one. And so you can see different characters. Entertainment, you're gonna have food and beverage. All right, so this is basically the 5K. And this is taking a little longer than I thought it was gonna take. Uh, but now we're going to the Adventure Out There 10K. So this should go a little bit faster because a lot of the stuff is gonna be uh, duplicate with very few uh, exceptions. But again, right here, we're gonna see basically almost the same time for the uh, start group opening and closing times, okay? We're not gonna go over race etiquette or reminders. Spectator viewing, yes, we are gonna go over this because it's gonna be a little bit different or it can be a little bit different. So you're gonna see the times are a little bit different. So the start is gonna be five to six, but again, the finish is gonna be extended, okay? 
and actually this is not going to have much of a extended viewing area for spectators so unofficial race results we've already so the 5k is not going to be timed but if you click on the split times right here it's going to take you to the race shack uh, here is transportation so it's basically going to be the same just extend it a little bit uh, so it's going to be all the way till 9 the transportation back to your resort that's going to be it so this and another important one right here road closures if you're driving even if you're not driving but you're going to be leaving that morning you did the 5k and now the 10k so you're going to be driving and you're around this area so the good one is to look is on the top left uh, left hand corner the road closures uh so you're going to be able to look at and what times you're going to you're not going to be able to and they pretty much go into detail so uh top left hand corner epcot center drive at epcot auto plaza uh, uh, to uh, at epcot auto plaza closed april 20th from 4 15 to 7. so you, again if you're going to be driving or you're going to have to get a lift or something or a, a uber to go to the airport you at least know what is going to what's going to be happening Again, I'm not going to go over the minivan connect lift. This one very quick again, because uh, here we go. So you can see what your numbers are. Jot them down. They're going to be on your bib anyway. And we're going to go over the 10K uh, map. The other ones are the same. So we're going to start off in the same place, except we're going the opposite way. So instead of turning right, we're going to take left. We're going to run a couple of miles before we head back. To Epcot at mile marker three, roughly, we're going to enter. We are going to have, we do have some water stops. I saw that over here. So once we get to three, three and a half, roughly, we're going to be getting a water stop. We're going to exit Epcot. We're going to go down into the boardwalk area. We're going to run by those resorts. It doesn't look like we go into Hollywood Studios on this day. This is a 10, uh, 10K. Uh, we go back into Epcot. There's going to be the water stop. Mile marker five, we run around the World Showcase. We finish off World Showcase. So again, we run in front of the Cosmic Rewind. We exit basically the same place. It's gonna be back uh, where Test Track is and we finish in the same place. And again, the Epcot lots and the sta uh, Epcot starting and staging area are gonna be basically the same. So we're gonna skip on that. We're gonna go to the Akuna Matata 10 miler. So the closing times are gonna change a little bit over here. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the starting groups are going to change a little bit. And yes, the closing times are going to change a little bit. So if you're doing this one, again, let's say you're in group C and you get there at 530, you're going to put you, uh, you're going to be basically just getting into group D. So they're going to put you in group D. Uh, so again, if, if, if you're in group A and you get there at 535, they are going to put you in group E. And don't be upset. That's not their fault. That's something that you did. So spectating... So it's going to be roughly about the same. I don't see anything different that they have here. So we're just going to go ahead. Transportation. Again, this is going to be a little bit more expanded. So we are now going all the way till 10 o'clock. But everything else is going to be the same. So just make sure that if you're utilizing their transportation, you know about this. But that's okay. Uh, road closures, uh, similar to the 10K going to tell you right off the back in the, in the top left hand corner which ones are going to be closed where it's going to be closed and there's going to be a map here so red is going to be uh, road closures and blue is going to be modified traffic so just be aware guys especially if you're leaving that morning you're driving whatever it is the mini uh, van connected by lift is the same thing the photo pass we've already seen and we're going to go over the 10 miler run this is the fun part this is why we go we're going to start off in the same place we're going to basically almost uh, going to be the same route that we do for the 5k except once we run around world showcase we're going to exit we're going to go around the boardwalk this time we are going into and you can see it right in the middle almost right in the middle here we're going to be going into uh, hollywood studios this is where we're going to hit mile marker four uh so we are going to exit uh, again, there's going to be, there's possibly, there's going to be uh, characters out on the road. They usually put characters out on the road. So it's not as if, if this is your first time, you're not just going to be running and there's going to be nothing out there. So um, the W's, uh, the blue W's are going to be uh, water stations. Um, the plus signs are going to be, the red uh, spot signs are going to be where you have medical tents. And they do have like uh, food right here 
Uh, it's a, almost at mile marker six. Uh, that's going to be the orange one over here. So we just run back. We go back in, run in, in front of World Showcase. Uh, again, right in front of uh, Cosmic Rewind. And it looks like the finish is basically going to be almost the same. So just to make sure, food stop, there we go. And so we got everything there. Okay, so we're almost done. So because the Epcot lots and the staging area is about the same. So we're almost done. So let's move over to the Splash. If you guys are doing the after party, I'm doing the after party. I'll be there. I'm all excited about that. My first, first time really going to the water park. So that's going to be interesting. So that's the 21st from 7 to 10. And so you're going to have to have a ticket. So I think they're still on sale, $85, I believe. You could probably even buy them. That's one of the ones that you're going to be able to buy at the Expo, I'm pretty sure, because it doesn't look like they're selling out. You can get there as early as 5 p.m. So enjoy the, uh, enjoy the parks before the event begins, okay? Delight in ice cream, novelties, popcorn, and select fountain beverages. Ooh, okay, that's going to be all included in the cost of the ticketed event. That's awesome. So so we get to, we get a few little quirks here and there, so... Additional snacks can be purchased at locations uh, across the park. Um, gives you the the list uh, of stuff that's going to be open there. Again, I, I'm not familiar with any of these. So I'm going to try to do them all. Uh, I love that there. So the important thing is going to be here is transportation. So from here, because I read this earlier, uh, from all Disney Resort hotels, please take the bus to Disney Springs area and transfer onto the bus for Disney Typhoon Lagoon Water Park. Transfer, uh, transfer will remain running during the events okay so it will and it, and the bottom it says bus services uh from disney lagoon typhoon lagoon water park to disney springs will end approximately 60 minutes after the water park closing so by 11 o'clock that's going to be the last one so guys just remember that all righty and this is make a wish i went through this whole thing this is really really cool i actually have friends of mine who actually uh have like a little make a wish where they actually sponsor uh, people. This is a great, great, great charity. I love this. Uh, you can look it over yourself. Uh, there's even volunteer um, information here. So let's continue going. So most of these other ones are going to be what the sponsors are. So Disney Springs, environmental sustainability. The only thing I have to say about that because they kind of go over that there. Uh, guys, if you can recycle, that'd be great. If you don't, even if you don't believe in recycling, it's none of my business if, if you don't believe in recycling. Don't make somebody's uh, a job harder because I always tell people this, uh, whenever you dump trash inside any kind of recycling bin, the people have to clean that out. So you're making somebody's job harder. I, you don't want anybody going to your place of work and just dumping stuff and making your job harder. So just do it. Even again, if you don't believe it, that's okay. But do you believe in making somebody's life harder, somebody's job harder? And that's one thing that I really would ask that you think about. Advent Health, that's an awesome one there. They usually have some stickers. Guys, if you haven't gone there, get some stickers from them. Uh, they're, for the, they're for the specific race. They're pretty good there, and they usually have some kind of sign up to where next uh, next year's run will be on them. So uh, this Budaco, I have no idea what that is. Citizen, uh, Echelon, again, I'm trying to figure out what some of these are. I, I pass by them and I don't <laughs> really don't see them. Enterprise Rent a Car, we know what that one is. Fresh Point, uh, I'm assuming that's food. Uh, Honey Stinger, they usually give us one in the uh, in the little box that they give you at the very end of the run, and they're pretty good. So uh, Mission. Uh, sport beans, they usually give us those during the run. There's the awesome Jeff Galloway. Go by and say hi to Jeff. Uh, Fit to Run is a great place if you forgot anything. Uh, just go in there. Uh, that's going to be a great place to do that. Uh, Fond Memories Graphics, that's usually where you can get your medals uh, put together. The ones behind me are, uh, are the older school. Actually, that one is actually from Disney. The one below is actually from Lasting Commemoratives. Who, they, they no longer exist anymore. Shocks. Yes, uh, self-explanatory. Sparkle Athletic. I know they've been sponsored for quite a while. Uh, Sparkly Sold and Sweaty Bands are all there, guys. Remember, to, if you're in, uh, remotely interested and you like something from them, make sure that you try to see if you can support them because, again, they're independent. So they're the ones, um, they're trying to make a living there. And uh, they, they go to Disney all the time. So the Digital Expo is going to be basically the same thing. But, guys, that is really it. 
So if you have any questions about the digital event guide, list them down below. But the main thing that I'm going to tell you is if you have a question about a specific thing, row closure, spectator viewing, now you know where to go and look at it. Uh, try to get all the information that you can. And then somewhere down the line, you can ask questions if you need to. So I hope that cleared it up. There's probably still a few questions about that. Please comment down below. Leave a comment or question down below. Of course, on social media, a lot of you guys even message me directly. So please feel free to do that. So the last thing for this video is uh, I was waiting and I kept thinking to myself if by Friday about 2 p.m. Eastern time, the merchandise doesn't drop. I'm just going to go ahead and finish it and send it out. Uh, but you know what? Merchandise for Springtime Surprise, or at least a preview for merchandise for Springtime Surprise dropped. So let's take a look at it. So first off, we have these two little bags and one of them has become pretty kind of popular, the one on the left where you can put your corksicle in. And another one is a lounge fly and of course the ears. I think the ears are gonna be very, very popular. Uh, we got some finisher, metal, uh, some finisher shirts, I'm sorry. The one on the left, the 10K, the one on the right, the 10 miler. Uh, we got the jacket, this one, uh, some of the people have already reached out to me saying they really, really like it. And speaking of the corksicle, the corksicle is on the left. It looks really, really nice and we got the jersey on the right and here are the ears they actually look pretty nice so did anything catch your eyes something that you have to get i'm a big up fan so i'm gonna have to probably get at least one thing from up uh but comment down below is there anything that caught your eye anything that you're gonna have to say man i'm gonna have to get in there as quickly as possible so i can get this so this is it for this video, but I will do one over there. So I will be uh, either at my resort at Universal or I will be on the streets at Universal and I'm going to be making one more video before we go to the expo. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be grateful to see you guys. I'm excited to see you guys. So without further ado, create a magical day, create a magical run and adventure.